Okay, go back to this question. Eh? Last time we have a confusion here. The ring system, whether it's 2, 3 or 1, 6. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, eh, I have not got time to check. For the acyclic compound, eh, of course you tr always try to get your double bond as the smallest number. Then only follow by the substituents. Okay, eh? this is the rule for the acyclic compound. But, uh, you know, for the so-called alkane, alkane, eh? alkane, you always get maybe 2, 3. If you want 6, you have 1, 6 dimethyl eh, or 2, 3 dimethyl, which one is uh, you will choose? Eh? For al alkane, alkane, eh? alkane, no, alkane, eh? alkane. A L K A N E. Okay, alkane. You will choose one six or two three. Huh? If I'm not mistaken, it should be two three. You have to check. There are rules, certain rules. Okay, but for the for the this is a cyclic alkene. You see, huh? The ring is number clockwise or counterclockwise to give the first substituent the lower number. Okay, in this case, the rule state that. The, the first substituent, in this case, is the methyl. You have to get the lowest number. That means you have to name it number 1. This is the rules for the cyclic alkene. So there is no argument whether it's 1, 6 or 2, 3 because this is the rules that you have to use to name uh, the IUPAC name. For the al alkane, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's 2, 3 but you can also check the rules in your very first chapter. Okay, so I leave it to you because you have to do your work sometime. Eh? You have to do your so-called research. Not everything depends on a uh, doctor because well, I also have to check. Sometimes there are certain rules that you might not remember if you do not use it frequently. Okay, so I leave it to you to check. But this one, in this case, the naming of the cyclic alkene is very, uh, it's confirmed. Eh? You have to name the substituent the lower number. That means it's one, you cannot name it as 2, 3. Although you come from here, 1, 2, 2, 3, you become 2, 3. But you shouldn't do that because you have to, uh, you have to give the first substituent, in this case is a metal group, as a lower number. Okay? So better we continue. So you better study. Where we stopped last time? Uh, is here. Eh? This is why we stop the mechanism. Eh? The H X while E two. Okay. Uh, not going to repeat this. And also we are also already study using bulky bases. Okay. You will attack on the left substitution side. You will get the Hoffman product. Okay. This is where we stop last uh, Monday. You think? So let's continue. Uh, this is also the same. Eh? Because these are the same topic we have covered, I'm not going to repeat again. Eh? Uh, this is diacyl, trans diacyl. This is exactly the same with the last uh, chapter that we have discussed. So make sure you understand this. Uh, this is the new one. Eh? This is a new uh, reaction to, uh, to produce alkene group. Okay, now you use vicinal dibromide. You, last, last chapter, you have studied also eh? vicinal dibromide, uh, maybe not vicinal dibromide, geminal dibromide, I can't remember already, and also vicinal dibromide. To produce what? The one is alkyne, triple bond. You still remember? For the alkyne, you use vicinal and geminal dibromide. It can be two bromide, one Br here, one Br here, or one Br here, one Br here. Okay, this is last, last chapter. You study for the production of al alkyne. Take for example, okay, you have this Br, Br group, you have H, H, and so on. Eh? The simplest one, we just choose the simplest one. Or uh, maybe CH3, CH3. Okay, so this one you can consider this is alpha, this is beta, or you can consider this is alpha, this is beta. Is in. Uh, this is a bitter elimination reaction to produce the alkyne. Okay, so you have a base which you can extract this one, come over here, get. Is it? This is the first step of the mechanism. You get CH3, 
C double bond C in this case uh, H okay and uh, and the BR here although the, the geometry is not correct okay you should draw like this but just want to show how does it happen eh? uh, then second second step you have a base you need abstract this H and you get a a triple bond CH3 CH3 eh? this is also uh, a vicinal dibromide but they are at the same position it's fine okay but the mechanism is this way but in this case to produce uh, what we call al alkene uh, you see the position must be uh, one line missing eh? remove Br2 from addition carbon the bromine must be anti chloroplana in this case anti chloroplana you see this Br here and Br here it cannot be at this position okay and you have to use sodium iodide in this case the iodide act, act as a base and the iodide attack the Br you see it produce IBR a double bond and leave a their Br a bromide out and it form NABR so this is a different reaction compared to the alkyne one the triple bond okay you must be able to distinguish these two and the base use is this one this is sodium iodide in acetone okay that one is a different base so you better uh, distinguish these two reaction okay clear you have to study eh, in order to uh, uh, compare them eh? go back and compare so this is another way to produce what we call the uh, alkene uh, or you can use sodium iodide in acetone as in the example here or zinc in acetic acid the mechanism might be different which need to check out again okay but it's good enough to know this sodium iodide in acetone eh? using the vicinal dibromide in uh, anti chloroplana uh, uh, geometry eh? it's an E2 reaction as well in this case this is also an E2 reaction but the side product is different okay so continue uh, this is something you also have studied before or you can removing HX while E1 reaction in this case the E1 reaction you use secondary or tertiary uh, alkyl halide okay so this one you see only one slide because we, I don't want to repeat eh? you can study in the last chapter so or dehydration of alcohol this one also we have covered in the last chapter to produce alkene eh? from the alcohol you use either sulfuric acid or HCl okay uh, it, because this reaction is re reversible reaction and the side product is water okay if you can remove the water following the Lichertelier principle you will get more product alkene okay let's see uh, so carbocation intermediate for secondary and tertiary alcohol okay for the primary alcohol it's also possible use HCl but there will be E2 reaction okay so let's uh, give a uh, revise so the mechanism uh, you have an OH group using sulfuric acid protonation is the first step okay you get the water molecule here because this is a secondary or tertiary alcohol you will tend to form carbocation okay so the water molecule leave you get a carbocation okay the next step will be the water act as a nucleophile uh, in this case uh, act as a base okay act as a base uh, attack the H forming a double bond uh, forming a double bond if you act as a nucleophile you will attack here you will get back the alcohol so it's a reversible reaction can you see so because the product produce water you have you can remove water to move the reaction towards the right hand side okay so you must be uh, if I ask you to draw the mechanism for the dehydration you must be able to draw this one uh, this is the, for secondary and tertiary alcohol formation of the carbocation and you have even studied it in the earlier chapter eh? as uh, this is what, uh, what we call a uh, dehydration mecha mechanism E1 eh? uh, E1 or E2 uh, E1 eh? E1 because it forms a 
carbocation as a slow step. Okay. So also to produce alkene, you can use industrial method. For example, catalytic cracking of the petroleum. Petroleum is a hydrocarbon, a mixture of hydrocarbon, long chain or short one. Uh, so you're using a very uh, what we call aggressive condition and you can produce alkene as a mixture. This is the industry grade. Eh? Long chain alkane are heated with the catalyst to produce alkene and a shorter chain of alkane. So you can from long chain you can break the long chain into a shorter chain alkane. Also you can uh, remove eh, a hydrogen from that to form a alkene. This is how they produce alkene in the industry. Okay, so this is a complex. What you get is a complex mixture of your product. Okay, many is you won't get a single product. There are many things in your, uh, in your reaction mixture or product mixture. Then you can use dehydrogenation of alkane. That means hydrogen is removed with heat or catalyst. Reaction is endothermic, enthalpy unfavor, but entropy favor. Okay, this one and uh, what we call uh, entropy and enthalpy, we will cover it uh, maybe in the next few chapters. And you also study in, in STPM before, isn't it? So, nine, these two methods are not suitable for lab synthesis. Eh? If you want a small scale, you want to target for a single product, these two methods is not suitable because they are industrial. Eh? Uh, that you in the, in the, it's an industrial method. Okay, you will get a, a mixture of products. So now, after we have studied how to produce uh, alkene, still remember how many way? Oh, there are quite many way. Eh? The slide has list out six. Is it from alkyl halide, E one E two reaction, from uh, alcohol dehydrogenation reaction, from vicinal uh, bromide or halide? Eh? Then uh, the last two method, the industrial methods. Eh? These are the methods where we can produce alkene. Okay, after we have st study how we can obtain alkene, now we are going to study the mechanism of alkene. So what type of mechanism that you will expect alkene to undergo? Because alkene, you have a double bond, which is uh, what we call uh, electron clouds. That means you can imagine that it will attack from the electron cloud, it will attack what? Electrophile. Okay, so this time the mechanism is different from the alkene group to attack the electrophile. Electrophile means it loves electron. Huh? Previously, what we have studied is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Huh? Now it's a electrophilic addition reaction from double bond become a single bond. Okay, <coughs> so let's see. So before we go to the reaction, let's see the reactivity of the double bond okay compare why double bond is more reactive than single bond can you list a reason can you give us a reason why double bond is more reactive than a single bond why eh, because the pi bond is weaker you still remember at the very beginning of the chapter we studied the bond energy eh? sigma bond is stronger uh, pi bond is weaker so it tend to undergo more reaction today eh, uh, please write your attendant list. It looks like somebody are absent. I'm not sure how many of you, but uh, Doctor, uh, no, not Doctor. This, uh, uh, what is the name already? Right your tutor, Puan, what is the name? Uh, Puan Kiru. Yes, she has issued, I think, three or five warning letters to those who didn't go to the tutorial class. I received the CC copy. So I haven't got time to work out your attendance. Some of you might be banned from sitting final exam. If your attendance did not achieve certain percentage, you are not allowed to attend your final exam. Is it true? Uh, so better uh, come to the class. Okay. So now, co please continue. Electrons in the pi bond are loosely held. We also study that. We know that the, in the alkene, uh, 
Uh, this is alkene. We know there are two electron clouds here, uh, forming by the pi bond, isn't it? So this is sp2. This is a sigma bond, and you have a two pi bond, two electron clouds. Uh, this is what it meant by uh, electron in the pi bond are uh, loosely held, uh, referring to the two electron cloud on on the top and the uh, below of the alkene. Uh, this uh, alkene. Uh. Electrophile are attracted to the pi electron. So if you have an electrophile, electrophile means you love, you love uh, electron. Okay, they are attracted or it will attack the electrophile. Okay, so in this case, because it involves a breaking a bond, for example, eh? <coughs> for example, this is electrophile. So this bond attack here, so you will get a what we call a uh, carbocation. That's why carbocation is formed because a bond is broken. Okay, so let's see the example. Uh, after that, nucleophile it will add into the carbocation a nucleophilic attack. Okay, a net result is a addition to the double bond. So let's see the example. In this case, uh, this is very clear. Lah. You don't need to copy. See, this is the general mechanism for what we call electrophilic addition. Why electrophilic? Because the first step involves the attack of electrophile. Okay, addition. Why addition? Because now double bond becomes a single bond. Okay. So let's say you have a double bond. In this case, attack the electrophile and the electrophile now. Oh, sorry, eh? this is missing one. Eh? Because after you attack, it forming a new bond. Okay, the E is here. Okay, you're forming a new bond, like in this case, and you have a carbocation. Okay, so from here, this electron cloud or this bond attack the E, so the E will attach to here. It depends, it depends on how many substituents you have, because it will tend to form a more substituted carbocation, okay, which is more stable. We will see eh, in the reaction, following the reaction. After the formation of carbocation, if you have a nucleophile, your nucleophile will attack the carbocation and your nucleophile is added here. Okay, this is the so-called the general mechanism for electrophilic addition. And now we are going to show you a specific example. Okay, it's already mentioned here. Uh, there are many types of addition, eh? electrophilic addition reaction. So hydration, high hydrogenation, adding the H2, uh, hydroxylation, adding the 2OH, oxidative cleavage, uh, epoxidation, halogenation, adding the X2 into it, uh, halohydrin formation, HX and cyclo-protonation, propanation, propanation. I think we will not cover all of this reaction, we will only cover a few, uh, which is in your textbook and I'm showing you here. So, the addition, eh, let's see about the stereochemistry of the addition. It could be a syn addition or anti addition. What does it mean? Syn means added, added from the same side. Eh? Anti addition means added from the opposite side. Let's see a specific example. Because the carbon atom of the double bond are both trigonal planar, the elements of X and Y can be added to them from the same side or from the opposite side. What does it mean? For example, now you can see this is a double bond, alkene double bond here. You have a HY, it could be a HCl, HBr, okay? So your double bond will attack the, uh, in this case it's using XY. Eh? So uh, your XY can be added from the same side, which is the same, a syn addition, or it can be added from the opposite side anti-addition. Eh? This is just a general idea. Eh? Now we are going to look at the specific example. So before we go into it, let's see what uh, decide where is the so-called the electrophile will be added. Eh? Because you have two, two carbon here, a double bond you have two carbon here. How are we going to decide whether the electron is going to add it into this C or add it into this C. Okay, then we have to follow the Makarnikov rules. Uh, what does the Makarnikov rule say? 
the H uh, will be added to a carbon with more H, isn't it? This is a simple definition. So let's see. Uh, let's see this example. That means you have uh, two uh, alkene carbon here. You have two H. That means if you have HCl, in this case a HCl, the H is a electrophile. After that, the chloride produced will be a nucleophile. Huh? You can also think in your mind. Okay. So now the double bond, the mechanism you can imagine in this way. Just take eh, the example eh? C double bond C CH3 H H H and you have a HCl eh? HCl this is partially positive this is partially negative so this become a electrophile eh? electrophilic site okay so a double bond will attack here and this one will break is it so now this involve a breaking of bond. So your H can be added here or can be added here, theoretically. But in your reaction product, you always see that the H is added into here. Why? Okay, let's see. Eh? Now it involves H, H, H. A CH3, a H, and a positive charge, carbocation. Okay? So now, why does the H doesn't add it to here, forming a carbocation here? Because if you compare, this is more substituted. Okay, that's why following the Makonikov rules, uh, the H always added to the carbon with more H or less substituted H. The reason is the carbocation form in the intermediate stage is more stable. Okay, so this is how we decide. Okay, that's why when you read here, Hx can be add, can add to the double bond to give two constitutional isomer, either this one or this one. Okay, if the H is added into this side, you will get the product as one chloropropane. If the H is added at the second side, you will get two chloropropane. In reality, you only get one product. Okay, you only get two chloropropane. The reason I have already stated. Makonikov rules state that in the addition of Hx to an unsymmetrical alkene, the H atoms, atoms add to the carbon that has the greater number of H to begin with. Okay, the reason is also mentioned already because of the carbocation stability. Eh? The carbocation stability. So, let's say if the, uh, the, the hydrogen is added on the more substituted carbon, you will get a primary carbocation. Okay, if it's added to the less substituted carbon, you will get a secondary carbocation. And the product is this. Why the secondary carbocation more stable than primary carbocation? If I ask you, can you answer? Why? Eh? Because you have the electron donating alkyl group, making the carbocation more stable. Okay? Clear? Okay, let's continue. Let's see. Eh? No, this is another example. Shh. Okay, this is another example. This time using HBR. Okay, the mechanism always the same. The arrow point come from the double bond, eh? not the C, eh? you have to redraw the arrow, come from the double bond, attack the H here, in this case you see which is more substituted, this, this what we call this C is more substituted, so your H will be attacked to the C here, clear everyone? Forming a more, sub, in this case is tertiary carbocation, even more stable, okay, the nucleophile pro, uh, produced to attack the carbocation forming leading to the product. Okay, it depends eh, following the Makonikov rules. Okay, I, I believe this is clear because you study this in your STPM. Isn't it A level? 
Okay, let's compare. Why does, uh, as I said, why does uh, secondary carbocation more stable? If you see the energy profile or Hartmann postulate and electrophilic addition, according to the Hartmann postulate path 2, now you see eh, Ea, Ea1, eh, let's say Ea1, this is the uh, activation energy for the formation of primary carbocation. Okay, and this is the activation energy for the formation of secondary carbocation. If I ask you uh, to predict the activation energy for tertiary carbocation, can you do that? Okay, of course you can. Imagine also. Uh, let's say this is the energy profile. Okay, this is this is activation energy for primary carbocation. Okay, and how about secondary? Secondary one is lower. Okay, Ea1, Ea2. Eh? This is uh, for secondary carbocation. How about tertiary? Of course, you can imagine this one is even lower. Eh? You have a uh, E3 here, a uh, Ea3 here. Eh? This is tertiary carbocation. So, the, the tertiary and secondary carbocation have a lower activation energy. That means it's a uh, more stable, okay, more easily formed. Thus the transition state to form the more stable in this case secondary carbocation is lower in energy. Eh? You can see that this is the energy needed to form a, a more stable carbocation. Because for a reaction to happen, you need to uh, so-called overcome the activation energy. Eh? What is the definition of activation energy? The minimum energy that need to be uh, overcome uh, before you can undergo a reaction. Okay, so you can read from here, and they can form faster as well. Okay, because it's lower, so they can form faster. This is uh, two reason. Okay. So how about the stereochemistry of electrophilic addition? So now, uh, so. Okay, we call the trigonal planar atom react with the region from two directions with equal prob uh, probability. Okay, that means the, the carbocation form. Okay, now you see the double bond attached to HCl and following the mechanical rules, you add the H attack here and you're forming a, a new stereogenic center in this case. So, because this is a carbocation, it's a trigonal planar structures. Okay, because only three bond, one, eight, two, three, four. Uh, how could it be? Let me think. Uh, okay, here. Let, let's pay attention here. Your one, two, three, four. Mm. Oh no, sorry. Eh? <laughs> this is not a positive charge. Eh? This is this is a strip referring to the stereogenic center okay i was thinking this is a carbocation this is not a huh? carbocation is here you, it doesn't show in the in the in the whiteboard okay it doesn't show the carbocation if you want to show the carbocation you show here ch2 ch3 ch2 ch2 ch3 and you have a 2h here you have a hcl Okay, this is positive, this is slightly negative, attack here. So you are going to show here, C, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, and uh, H, 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 ah, this is carbocation. Okay, <laughs> three bond, triglona plana. Huh? Doctor was, I haven't, haven't uh, got out yet, <laughs> thinking this is a uh, carbocation. Okay, so this is. After that, after that, your chloride in this case, your nucleophile can attack from from both position. Okay, from here or from below. Okay, you can either attack from both side. Either you say from no, from top and or below, or you can from right and left. This depends on how you see it. So you will form a two enantiomer. Okay, a racemic mixture with, with uh, equal uh, ratio, 50-50%, eh? because the nucleophile can attack from either side. 
okay so this is the stereochemistry for the addition so if you have a a, a chiral starting material you will hear a, a, a chiral product this is a chiral product eh? because these are a racemic mixture so sometimes new new uh, new stereogenic center are formed from halogenation eh? this is that's all this is a new stereogenic center eh? attacked to four different group okay if you have a stereogenic center mean you your product will have a, a racemic mixture in this case because the carbocation is a trigonal planar shape the nucleophile can attack from either side okay so a bear a, a same ratio a, a racemic mixture clear everyone okay but look at this the mechanism of hydrogenation illustrates why two enantiomers are formed. Uh, this is how it shows. Okay, because for the first step, okay, your initial addition uh, of H occurs from either side of the planar double bond. See, you have a double bond. Okay, you can attack from uh, from the this double bond on top or from the below. But the end result is the same. You will produce a, a carbocation. Okay, these two carbocation, they are identical. Okay, because they are trigonal planar shape. Okay, so either I repeat, either you attack from the double bond here, the the top double bond, or you attack from the double bond below, you will yield a identical carbocation. Ah, uh, these two, these are the same. Okay, after this step, ah, uh, then the chloride can attack from top or from below then only it yield a, a racemic mixture okay you see ah, this is the second step okay after the carbocation is formed your chloride atom can attack from from the top or from the below if attack from top you get this if attack from below you get this okay and and this is what we call a scene addition because you see the red color H okay just from the HDL is here and or you get a anti addition eh? HCl is here this is very clear eh? it show you how does it happen so therefore you get a, a racemic mixture in this case they are enantiomers okay oh this is 53 I have to finish more slide eh? because you have 80 slide okay better be quick eh? okay the so same thing happen if you are able to understand the first example you will be able to understand the second example okay see here if this is in the cyclic bond eh, you have a double bond so in this case they are symmetric can you see they are symmetric you have a metal group here and you have a metal group here so the carbocation can be stay uh, uh, either way but in this case it, the double bond can attack from the, from top or from below isn't it if you attack from the below you will get the H at the this position pointing inside the plane and attack from the top okay the electrophilic double bond attack to the top you will form get the H here but yet you will get the carbocation here these two are enantiomer because this is a cyclic product compared to just now is a cyclic product okay so you will get more even uh, in an, uh, what we call stereomer okay so if attack from below the bond you will get a H pointing inside the plane okay and you get a carbocation here now you have two more possibility okay your chloride in this case can attack from below or from the top okay if attack from below you will get this attack from the top you will get this okay these two are they enantiomer? They are not enantiomer, eh? they are diastereomer. Okay? And for the same case, if the H, if the elect double bond attack the H from top, you will get this and it produces a carbocation. The second possibility is the chloride nucleophile can attack from the top or attack from the below. So if from below you get this, from top you get this. So you get A, B, C, D for uh, stereoisomer. Okay? Among the four, these two are enantiomer because their stereochemistry is exactly opposite or uh, opposite okay pointing inward pointing outward pointing outward pointing inward and you compare this 
these two are pointing inward, these two are pointing outward. Okay, these are sin addition, these are anti addition. So you get two enantiomer for anti addition, two enantiomer for sin addition. Clear? Maybe doctor is a bit quick, but you, if you go back and you draw out and you sit quietly, you will be able to understand eh? because this is not something very difficult. Okay? So let's continue. So four stereoisomers are formed. Compound A and, and D are enantiomer. Compound B and C are enantiomers. How about this? Uh, this is a, after this we will finish. Eh? So this is using free radical addition of HBr. The product you get is anti mekhanikov Okay, this one you have to bear in mind. Why is anti mekhanikov Because the radical intermediate form eh, is more stable. Let's see. Eh? Let's, uh, in this case, the anti, if you want to get this anti mekhanikov product, you can only use HBr. Okay, HBr have the right bond energy. If you H use HCl, HCl bonding is too strong, okay? Because Cl is on the top of the uh, group, okay? More electro, more electronegative. So the bond HCl bond is stronger. Hi is too reactive. Hi bond tend to break heterolytically to form iron, okay? So for any radical reaction, the bond cleavage is homolytic. Why is homolytic? Mean you have HBr, for example, is donate half, donate half. We are using a single arrow, okay, for homolytic cleavage, okay. So let's see uh, the initiation step, okay. Now you are using a peroxide ROOR, okay. You you are using a. This is the initiation step. Or you can call it an initiator. You have R O O R under the heat or UV. Okay, so this initiator, okay, will break uh, what we call homolytically. You can show this way. Okay, one electron here, one electron here. This is a homolytic bond. If you want to show this way, also no, it's, it's correct. Okay, so after the first step, you will generate a OR radical. This OR radical then will react with the HPR. Okay, the OR from here you generate two OR radical. The radical is on the O, only one, one dot. Okay, then your OR radical will then react with the HBR. Okay, in this way you show a single arrow with a single bond, and this one here. This one here, okay. Then make it form ROH and a BR radical. Okay, you will form a ROH new bond and a BR radical. Okay, this is the initiation step. This one also you study in A level. Eh? After the BR radical, uh, this, this BR radical now become an electrophile. Electrophile. Okay. Why is an electrophile? Because it will further react with the double bond here. You see, when there is an alkene, when uh, you have a double bond, the double bond now with a single arrow forming a, a new bond with the BR. In this case, the radical, uh, this is an important step. You pay attention here. Now you have a C double bond C, H, 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 CH3. This is, this is more substituted. Eh? So from the BR radical generated from the initiation step, this is an electrophile. Why is an electrophile? Because the double bond attack. Okay, uh, you can show this. They are forming a, a new bond meeting together. Okay, single arrow, single arrow forming a new bond. Now you have to decide where does the, the other bond go? Okay, it must go to here. Why does the radical must go to here? Because it's forming a what we call more substituted, more substituted radical. This is like in the case of carbocation. Eh? More substituted the better. Okay? So if the radical go into here, 
So your your intermediate now is a more substituted radical, okay? And the mechanism is different. This radical then attack the H, generate another Br. So it form a so called a anti mechanical product, okay? Anti mechanical product because now your H is attacked to a. Uh, let's see. This is not a good example. Eh? Okay, let's see. Eh? Uh, your Br is attacked to the more substituted C. Eh? Let's see the intermediate, the radical here. You have a H, you have a CH3. Now, uh, your C, your Br is attacked here. You see, your Br is attacked to the more H side. Okay, and now your H is attacked to the... Now, this radical react with HBr again. Okay, this radical... Uh, Okay, and Br. Now you see, eh, your H, pay attention here, eh? H, H, Br. What is my Konnikov rule say? The H will attack to the side, to the carbon with more H or less substituted. In this case, for the radical reaction, the H, okay, the H, now this is a H, is attacked to the more substituted C. Therefore, it's called anti mechanical product. Okay, therefore, it's called anti mechanical product. Pay attention to the H, not pay attention to the Br. Eh? Let's see. This H, this is clearer. Eh? From here, this is clearer. Okay, because this missing, you cannot see from here to here. Eh? There is a metal group here. Okay, pay attention to here. Maybe you would like to copy. Eh? 